houses of worship across the country have been offering up their sanctuaries as vaccination sites as vaccination rates have risen to nearly 2.4 million a day. But it's not just the brick and mortar endorsement of vaccine acceptance. Faith leaders across the country have been preaching the gospel of the COVID-19 vaccine, both in favor and against. ABC's Terry Moran brings us this report on the debate between faith and science. On Sunday mornings, you'll find Father Paul Abernathy preaching the gospel at St. Moses the Black Orthodox Church. But the rest of the week, he's walking the streets of Pittsburgh, sporting a fedora and preaching a different gospel, the gospel of vaccine acceptance. I've just heard so much about the COVID vaccine and I'm not too sure about it. Let me ask you this, would you, would you be open to receiving some information about the vaccine? The ancient conflict, science versus religion, and here it is again in our time. A 2021 Pew Center report found that vaccine hesitancy in America is highest among black Protestants and white evangelicals. Many Catholics might be wondering whether or not they should take this coronavirus vaccine. I would tell them absolutely. There is a conflict from time to time with science and, and scriptural teaching, but I don't think there's a, a conflict as it relates to vaccines. What are you telling the people who come to Life Tabernacle? Don't take the vaccine. Now, ABC News Live takes you on the ground, in the church pews and out in the streets, where the messages of vaccine confidence and resistance are being preached. Sometimes when we pray, there's, there's, he gives us blessing by way of medicine, by way of uh, vaccines. When I receive the vaccine, it means I have one more day to praise God on this earth. Here in Pittsburgh's predominantly black Hill District, Father Paul hears questions about the vaccine that are rooted in a painful history. Tell me, Father, about the reasons that black Americans might be hesitant to take this vaccine. The first is distrust of government. When people see the government involved in vaccine creation and dissemination, right away there is a degree of distrust because the experience that people have had with many other government programs has been negative. The second is a distrust of clinical abuse. Many people think of the Tuskegee experiments that affected 600 African-American males, but many people, aside from Tuskegee, have lived experience of discrimination in the healthcare system. And so this history of clinical discrimination, this history of clinical abuse that is lived experience now also undermines vaccine confidence. And thirdly, a distrust of corporate America. There is the sense that there are people who are going to be getting rich off of the vaccine. We want to affirm the negative experiences people may have had with the government system. What at the same time we want to do is to share information about the vaccine that is accurate. Efforts like Father Paul's to bring accurate vaccine information to the African-American community may be working. That Pew Center poll shows that hesitancy among black Protestants has dropped from a high of 59% last fall to 30% today. But doubts about the vaccine still linger among half of white evangelicals. You're telling your church members to choose not to have a vaccine? That's right. I'm You're telling them, don't get it. I do it every service. You might have heard about Pastor Tony Spell of the Apostolic Pentecostal Life Tabernacle Church in yes, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. God, you've been good to me, Jesus. He's been arrested more than 30 times since the pandemic began for defying emergency public health orders in Louisiana that prohibited large gatherings. For 61 years, our local congregation has never missed a service. Their families are in this church. Their finances are in this church. Their faith is in the church. The church is everything to us. It is a conviction for us. Among their congregation of several thousand, Pastor Spell says they only had one debt that was determined to be related to COVID-19. When one of the church's lawyers, a close friend of Spell's, was hospitalized and severely ill with COVID, it made no difference. Did that make you think twice? This is real. Mm -hmm. this, is, this can be devastating. Mm -hmm. Did that make you think twice? Never thought twice. When you have a religious conviction, nothing's going to separate you. The charges against Tony Spell are currently pending. He is separately challenging the constitutionality of the governor's orders. That matter is currently on appeal in the federal courts. His attorney tells ABC News they are confident they will win. Where in the Bible does it say don't get a vaccine? 
1 Corinthians 6, 19, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. What? Know you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Lord dwelleth not in temples made with hands. It's not a building. But the Spirit of the Lord dwelleth in us. Don't defile that temple. Any man that defileth that temple, him will I destroy. If the vaccine defiles my body, if the medical advisors that we have say, better beware, we're not going to do your vaccines, we're not going to wear your mask. If they were wrong a year ago on our assembly, they're wrong today. The FDA has authorized three COVID vaccines so far, and those vaccines were tested with over 100,000 volunteers before the agency gave them the green light. In approving them, the FDA noted that the vaccines are highly effective at preventing severe illness and death and that side effects are rare. But Pastor Spell's message is still being heard in his church, and some members may be following his lead. I do not plan to get the vaccines. We believe here that God is the ultimate healer. I mean... The God, uh, he can cure anything, everything. Beyond the belief in divine intervention, there are moral concerns about the vaccines as well. I believe it's genocide. I believe it's infanticide. When you take a fetus from a mother's womb, the safest place in the world, and you take that baby and you use those stem cells to inject into somebody's bicep to keep them from dying from a virus, I don't trust you. Okay, but there's no f stem cells from fetal tissue in those vaccines. They were not made with those at all. Some companies don't use stem cells. All right, it's a synthetic vaccine. Irregardless, we're not taking the vaccine. The quick rollout of the vaccines has reignited the debate over the relationship between modern medicine and stem cells from abortions. For the COVID-19 vaccines, those fetal cell lines came from elective abortions in the 1970s and 1980s, and they are then replicated over time. Fetal cell lines are not the same as fetal tissue. From one aborted fetus, you could have millions of fetal cell lines that allow for vaccines to be able to be replicated and made. These differences in vaccine development have led some religious leaders to prefer one vaccine over another. I would be concerned uh, about something that we used fetal cells from uh, a murdered child. But Moderna and Pfizer, we've been told uh, from the scientists uh, that the, the way they produce that vaccine uh, these, these things were not used. The religious community is concerned that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is morally compromised because it's used fetal cell lines in development, as well as testing and production. The reason why they're partial to the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines is because Moderna and Pfizer only use fetal cell lines in testing. In the Catholic Church, the debate has caused a rift among church leaders. Many U.S. dioceses across the country have now declared the Johnson & Johnson vaccine morally compromised. But those statements put them at odds with the Vatican itself. The Holy See, Rome, has issued uh, a statement and, and declared that the vaccines are morally and ethically acceptable. They involve... Uh, the hard work of a, of a lot of very uh, competent people. So would you say for people who are wondering that the vaccines are, are part of God's plan? Well, insofar as uh, human knowledge is a part of God's plan, yes. Whenever we can uh, give good example to our people as public figures, as leaders in the community, we should do so. And then by the, the example of Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, I've had the vaccine. We're trying to tell our people, we want you to follow our good example. And it's not just the Pope. Franklin Graham, son of famed evangelist Billy Graham, told us he's taken the vaccine as well. First left Charlotte, he left on that train. We okay. met him on the grounds oh. of the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, North Carolina, his father's boyhood home. And God needs you in his kingdom. My father believed in, in modern medicine. If any time there was a, a vaccine or something that could help protect you, he, he, he was an advocate for it. He took it. I believe that it's consistent with scripture that we protect our lives and do whatever we can to save life. So I don't have any problem with... Um, telling a person to take an aspirin or telling a person to have a vaccine. For Graham and for many people of faith, the vaccines are a proof of God's love. I thank God for the doctors and the researchers that have put 
this time and effort and money to develop these, these vaccines. And I, I hope that the American people will use them. With so many struck down by the coronavirus, Graham takes issue with those who use their pulpits to preach against the vaccine. Well, I would hope that the pastors in the pulpit would tell people how they can be saved from God's judgment, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. I think a pastor to tell uh, someone not to take the vaccine um, is, is problematic because what would happen if that person died, got coronavirus and died? Then is the pastor responsible? Uh, I mean, I, I would feel responsible. It doesn't have to be either we, either we love God or receive the vaccine, but really there can be the two coming together in the church. Do you make headway with people who, who rely on the Bible, on Scripture for their life and don't want to get the vaccine because they, they look at it and they say, it tells me not to? It's a, it's a different faith than what I am familiar with. Um, I pray that, uh, that we can all come together and that our views certainly can be reconciled. And I pray that whenever we preach our faith, we preach it in a way that truly does value human life. And that is why, for me, this work is of utmost importance. And for Father Paul Abernathy, that work begins in the community, one person at a time.